So today's video is going to be about the different types of fibre that you might be able to use for rerouting. Um, these are all really normal types of fibre that people regularly use. I'll go through, I'll say what I like about them, what I don't like about them. Um, I'm going to try not to be overly negative. I'm going to start this off by saying I do already have like a, a bias towards alpaca. Um, I don't even know how many reroutes I've done at this point. It's going to be well over 100 um, and I mostly use alpaca, I've done a handful of ones not an alpaca although I do have experience with mohair, wool and human hair as well um, but this is just uh, some different types. Ignore the different amounts of everything that I have um, but I'll just do a quick run through. So this is mohair. Um, this mohair I got in a trade from a very reputable and lovely rerouter named Christina. Um, I think she goes by Niboku Dolls. I'll pop a little link to her in the description. It's really lovely. Oh my God, it's literally gorgeous. I'm not sure if it comes out stunning on camera. Um, and then I bought some Wensleydale locks. I haven't rooted in Wensleydale in a long time, if I'm completely honest. Um, it's not normally my preferred choice. I normally go with alpaca because it's honestly the easiest to use, even if it is more expensive. And these were from Numal Barn on Etsy with a really, really reasonable price. Yeah, this is Teeswater from Yorkshire Wools on Etsy. Again, really really reasonable this <laughs> I do have more of this but um it's dyed a more hard to see colour um this is a very small sample of um mohair but it's more of a kind of crimped mohair than this kind of beautiful wave and that one I'm 90% certain I would have bought from Mohair House, but although I'm not sure if they're still going. And this is some alpaca of mine. Um, I buy mine dirty and then I process it myself. I don't sell it. Um, this is purely a hobby for me. It's just cheaper to buy and dirty and sort out myself. This is a mid length. It's not long, it's not short. And I've dyed it purple but I think the reason there's only a little bit of this is because it was a test dye and it's quite patchy so it was not a good test dye. Yeah so that's what we're going to be working with today. So I'm going to start off with my mohair with the wave and this fibre you can already see is quite thick. Um, the strands themselves are much thicker than on alpaca. It's honestly gorgeous. It's um, much more close to human hair than it is to alpaca, just in thickness. So I'm just going to pull out one lock. So I'm just going to do a brush test. So I'm not sure if it will pick up on camera, but can you see this kind of waxy residue that comes off? So you get that um, on mohair, but you do not get that on alpacas. It looks kind of dandruffy, but it's like a, a waxy, greasy coating. It brushes out quite nicely because it's quite straight for mohair. So you can see it, um, it stays relatively contained, which is ideal for rooting to be honest. This might be the nicest mohair I've actually ever brushed up for rooting. So I'm going to put that to the side and I'm going to do the other mohair because I think it's probably easiest to do them for comparison. So this mohair I have to say is really waxy. I was just rooting something up in this and I actually had to stop and go soak it um, in some soapy water because it just it was getting nowhere. I might wipe this residue away before I keep going. So this one, um, 
I had cleaned before I dyed it and then I think I washed it again after it was dyed but I have rooted something up in this and I did have to then wash it a few more times after it was rooted to get rid of, can you see the way it's all sticking together? This waxy coating. So this one you can see it also has these kind of waxy coatings but they've all been dyed purple. So I'm just going to clear the area a bit before I keep going. But you can see here that it is huge, like it just, it just gets massive. So you can tame it down a bit, you can make it a bit smaller and pop it here. Ideally, you want something more like this, especially if you're new to it because this is much easier to root because it stays kind of nice and tight. So when you pick it up, you can see how much you have. You can easily tell before you start knotting it that you have enough for plug. It's nice and easy, nice and simple. What you pick up and kind of poke together you can tell what you have really easily and it's nice and uh, quick to get even sized plugs. If you find that your knots aren't staying, you've got too much hair. If your knots are becoming unraveled, you've got too much hair, just full stop. Um, So those nice and simple. <laughs> I really like this mohair. I'm I'm normally a bit anti mohair to be honest, but okay, I'm a fan. Whereas this one is more kind of candy floss texture. It's much harder to see what you're getting. Whereas on that white mohair, when I pushed it together, it instantly formed, you know, a very clear segment. Here is it's like sticking a needle into a candy floss. So then I have to pick it up, twist it to see how much I have. And now here I think that's not quite enough. So I want to get a bit more. And that should be enough. Okay, that looks good. So you can see how it takes more time just because if every plug takes me kind of 50% extra, I'm not sure if that's even gonna pick up on camera, but there's wisps of hair the whole way along here. Anyway. Um, it's not that the hair isn't any good for rerouting, it's just slower. So if you're looking for that particular look, you really, really, really want those kind of like small ringletty curls, by all means, pick yourself up some curly um, mohair, but it just takes longer to do. So I'll try and stick this back together as best as I can and I'll pop that over here. Right, so if my memory serves me well, which it often doesn't because I did remember not liking my hair very much at all, but this is a pleasure to work with. Um, I do remember finding this quite difficult to do. Um, for reference, if we talk about texture, this is very smooth but it's not, um, it's very smooth, but it does feel hair-like, um, much, quite similar to my own hair, the feel of it. Whereas this is smooth and so, so soft. And that was the alpaca for reference. Whereas um, the Wensleydale is soft by all means, but it does have a kind of drier, coarser texture, but that's curly hair does in general. 
the tea's water, this tea's water, I don't know about all tea's water, I would say it has a similar texture to the Wensleydale, but maybe slightly silkier. But again, I don't have enough experience with these two fibres to tell you whether all of it is like that. Um, these are packaged beautifully, by the way. This is what you want when you're buying locks. You want someone to have already found your heads and your tails for you, or your root and tail, top and end, whatever you want to call it. Um, they're already all in the same direction, which means they are less likely to have any kind of pre-felting going on. And same here. So I'm really, really impressed with this because sometimes you just get a bag where they're all facing different ways. And that's, I mean, that's not great for beginners because sometimes they find it hard to tell, you know, what's the tail and what's the top. Whereas you can normally tell because the, um, the tail will have more of a tight curl and the top will tend to be wispier but quite often it will have a harsh line where it's been cut um right so let's get some of this i feel like this is about the same amount i used for those but this is shorter which is going to make this a little harder well i'm quite excited about this i feel like if i got a good conditioner on this it would actually be lovely so already you can see that because of its curliness it has just <laughs> disappeared into nothing um much again much again this is terrible english um i promise this is my like native tongue um once again it's got a real candy floss texture to it um I don't think it's just the curls that make it do this. I think it might be something to do with um, it being generally a drier hair, whether this means more static works its way into it or what I do not know. Um, but the nice thing about this though is it's not sticky at all, whereas the mohair had quite a lot of kind of like um, grease for the tips which is not a sign of poor quality mohair. Honestly, it's just a thing about mohair. This one didn't at all. I cut because it makes it easy to see which end is which. I'll run my hands for it a few times to try and get rid of some of the static to give myself something easier to work with. Um, and then I go for it and start making knots. This is even harder to see than the curly mohair but that was quite a good first but that might be a bit too thick actually I'll get rid of some I do think it's lovely fiber I do think it will make a a nice reroute but um it will not be as easy to root as alpaca but saying that this comes out about five pounds an ounce or something similar whereas alpaca really varies in price but I mean sometimes it can go for like you know 40 quid an ounce would not be um, unheard of so it's like what a little over 10% of the price of alpaca so I mean the feel is completely different this is much drier um much more coarse fiber but saying that it's not um it's still soft it's just this is ultra soft so like this is super 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 soft but you would never be like, sheeps aren't soft, if that makes sense. Um, this, like, you definitely, is definitely rootable, absolutely. And if that was the kind of style you're going for, that you wanted, kind of like, um, curlier, drier hair, you weren't going for like, super soft, super sleek, absolutely 
usable, lovely fibre. I don't really have anything bad to say about it. This is just a comparison video. Um, it's each to their own here. Okay, so Tea's Water. Tea's Water again is another sheep's wool. I'll grab a few out because I want to have about the same amount that I did of everything else. These are very tight curls. These are going to be difficult to brush. Um, tighter curls are more difficult to brush because they try to curl back up. Um, whereas our pack doesn't have curls usually, so it doesn't spring back. Again, I'm going to start at the very end and I'm going to work my way up. So, just doing a stroke test. Um, I would say there's not too much difference between the two different types of wool, but the difference between this and the mohair, there's a big difference in kind of dryness and softness. And then the difference even from this to this is like staggering. Um, <laughs> okay, so much hair. Right, where to start? I'll start with a snip. Then I will try to get enough hair. As with any type of hair, if you are working on one, it will, um, you will get better at seeing how much is an appropriate amount of hair for a plug. So again, a lock is the way it kind of naturally divides, so each of these is a lock. But a plug is the smaller division that you make on it before you root it. Oh my gosh. Right, there are some shorter bits here I can see, so I don't think I tied that knot low enough. Um, last time I think some of my hair has no I still lost loads what's going on here um, and I promise I'm a professional okay I'm losing a lot of hair and I'm not really sure why but you know that's still an excellent length this would be floor length on a bly um, so for hair that is this long um, you know five pounds Per ounce is uh, inarguably cheap, to be honest. Oh, another thing is the curly hair, it looks like loads of hair until you tie knots in it. Um, and then you'll be surprised, like, how few plugs you get out of a knot. Um, don't mind me and all this hair loss. I don't think that's any fault of the fibre. Um, it's just I haven't done a reroute this curly in a while and I don't think I was holding it tight enough when I was um, combing it because uh, when you comb it it will pull the hairs not necessarily at the same um, length so it might pull some out more than others depending on how you know how stuck they are and so I think I wasn't holding it tight enough to stop it from pulling and I've ended up with hair here that's all different lengths so that's on me but again you know you don't have to hold that tight on alpaca because it doesn't not as badly because it's not as easy to felt it's not as dry and it's not as curly these aren't faults in Tees Water or Wensleydale they're just differences they're different fibres they look different ways so if you guys scooch up I'll just pop you on your friend and I'll whip one of these out so I'll get a longer one. Um, this is a lock of alpaca. This alpaca has been washed, dyed and brushed 
it has been thrown in a plastic bag with the rest of my scraps. Um, I don't know when I did a short pebble review. I literally can't remember it. So I'm fairly certain that this was a die test. I don't think I ever made a full reroute in this. If I did and you own it, I'm so sorry I forgot. Send me a little comment below being like, you did make one of those, I own it. So, if we show... Like, if you brush this, it stays exactly where you left it. Literally, the best you get is lines down it from where the teeth were. So this is my alpaca. And I'll start making nuts. So you can already see before you pick it up how much you have. I make a lot of alpaca reroutes, so I'm fully aware how much I want for plug. Um, another reason why I'm probably biased towards alpaca is because I use it so often, I really know how much I want for a plug. I can tell by looking at it on the aisle if that knot is going to stay or if it's wishful thinking. Ooh, my fingers are so fumbly. I normally have much shorter nails than this and this thumbnail is getting too long. And it's making my life harder than it needs to be. Oh, another nice thing about alpaca is even if it's really kind of unevenly dyed like this is, once it's rooted, a lot of that gets kind of disguised and it looks lovely. It's just, in my opinion, easier. <laughs> Um, that, you know, that's, that's me. That's why I prefer it. It's not, um, there's nothing wrong with mohair. Definitely not. Mohair is still a very popular fibre to root in. And there's nothing wrong with Wensleydale or Teeswater, but they tend to be bought more by beginners and... I think often it puts people off rerouting because if you start with something like this, it's really easy and then you want to do it again because you think that was so much easier than I thought it would be. Whereas if you start with something like this, you can already see that like this compared to this, like what do you think is going to be easier to work with? It's alpaca. So people buy teaser water or mohair as a, as a beginner because it's so cheap. It's much harder to work with and they, they don't want to keep rerouting because they think, you know, this was crazily hard. But the results can be quite impressive because it is so, um, such a kind of like a wild fibre when it's brushed and it, it can be absolutely, you know, I mean, look at this, like truly like gorgeous, cute curls when it's in its curl formation. Um you can get such completely different looks. Like imagine a whole reroute of, you know, this actually I've got a bunch. Like this is mohair plugs I've made, um, but because I've just made them, they're still in their, you know, frizzy bit. But imagine like a whole reroute of this, because this is only 150 plugs and I would use a thousand. So it would be just huge and um, stunning, really. And you could do all kinds of hairstyles with it that you just would never be able to do on alpaca because alpaca is just far too straight. So again, I don't want to say anything bad about any of the fibres. Like They're all perfectly good in their own right. As a beginner, I would try and steer you towards a straighter fibre like you know, a loose wave mohair or alpaca. In my opinion, alpaca is easier because it's finer. I think it holds knots better. Um, again, these are opinions, not facts. Um, you can see 
why the curlier fibre would be harder to work with. It's like clearly harder to see what you're doing, but again, it does provide you with a completely different scalp at the end than a straight fibre would be, as is evident by looking at it both in its brushed form and its straight form. Um, so if you did want to save a bit of money and not pay full whack for the alpaca, maybe you could go for some wavy mohair because this honestly is truly gorgeous would make an absolutely gorgeous will make an absolutely gorgeous scalp um and even mohair is significantly cheaper than alpaca so you won't get the exact same effect this is um slightly less soft um slightly thicker fibers and this is you know, very wispy, very, very soft. I have got crimpy mohair, straight mohair. I've got crimpy mohair, but doubled over in a lock and loop. Um, you should not lock and loop mohair or any natural fibre, and I will explain why. That's because you can, I'm not sure if it will show, but this is already trying to clump together in a kind of dreadlocky fashion. And this has been washed and not brushed. And you can see that these are not going back into curls. And that's because the hair is facing in two different directions. So hair has little barbs on it. And if it's all facing the same direction, these barbs don't really properly intertangle. Even if there's two hairs side by side, they just don't intertangle but um, if your hair is doubled over it can intertangle and it can kind of lock in that position and that's how you would felt um, which is something people do on purpose but you don't want that to happen when you're doing hair so this is my Wensleydale and this is my Teeswater and then here's some alpaca, although I have made a bit of a mess of this because I've used two different alpacas because there was already some fully purple stuff in there that's much longer than this purple and white one. So it's white and then it goes to purple, but it actually, because this hair is only about that long and the rest of the purple is much longer, it makes it look like the alpaca is all broken, but it's not, it's just two completely different ends of hair, um, which in hindsight was a bad idea. So I've just gone through and wet and washed the hair and given it a good old shake. And you can already see kind of the curl formation coming back. Um, the Wensleydale seems to have suffered the most. So I'm gonna scrunch it and I'm gonna leave it somewhere to dry. Um, so I'll go through again and show you. Um, I've got the mohair, the curly mohair, looking beautiful. I've got the straight or kind of like wavy mohair, again, looking gorgeous. Don't let this fool you that this mohair still looks Okay, I mean, I think we can all agree that this looks better. This has got more of a crimp to it. Whereas this one, because um, they're doubled over, it's kind of preventing the curl because the hair is not going in the same direction. And because this is doubled over, it will felt with time. This is going to felt. Um especially if you bring the doll anywhere, it's in a bag and it rubs. This is the Wensleydale, which in my opinion needs some conditioning to bring it to its kind of full life because you can see the dryness in that compared to the shiny, shiny, sorry, it's totally off camera. You can see the dryness, you can see the dryness compared to the shiny, shiny of the mohair. Uh, we move along a bit further and we've got some tea's water. The tea's water is taking its curl back a bit better 
than the Wensleydale, but to be honest, they could both do with some conditioner. And then we've got my two different alpacas and totally different lengths, which has just air drives straight, smooth as expected for alpaca, to be honest. Um, but yeah, so here's just an example of what the different hair types look like when rooted, because that will help you make a decision. You can see mohair quite easily goes back to its. This has been washed several times with um, dish soap. So make no mistake, this has not been um, like lovingly handled in a better style than this has. Because um, you need proper dish soap to get through the levels of um, sticky, greasy, waxy stuff that's on the ends of them. Um, so these two I would, I would condition to be honest. Um, but the alpaca, as per usual, just comes out fine. It looks a bit raggedy here because normally I would straighten alpaca before I photographed it just to make it um, ultra um, nice for the photographs. Um, but yeah, just depending what you want it for your doll, for the look of your doll, and how much time you were willing to invest, how much money you were willing to invest. Um, these are just the different looks that the different styles of hair give. So we've got, you know, a very crimpy mohair. We've got a wavy mohair. Would not at all recommend doing lock and loop. It's really, really, it's going to mat. It's a bad idea. I only really did a lock and loop on this one because um, it will probably be matted by the time I bring it to a convention. And then I can show how bad of an idea it is. Um, then this is the Wednesday doll and this is the tease water. The tease water actually does look pretty good. Um, nice curl definition in there. And then some alpaca. I might brush the alpaca through. <laughs> Give it its best chance. Um, yeah, those are some different types of hair. I hope you found this helpful. So just to follow on from the little comparison video, um, there can't really be an overall winner. Obviously, it's just what look are you after? What do you personally want? How would you like your reboot to look and what your budget is? I find the easiest al is alpaca. Um, I know that it is much more expensive than its counterparts, but for me, I find it much easier to use. If you are a beginner, I would steer you towards a straighter fibre. Um, the straighter it is, the easier it is to make plugs with it. And if it's a natural fibre, you can always curl it later anyway. If you are looking for a natural wave, I would probably, again, if you're a beginner, steer you towards mohair rather than wool, just because it is easier. But depending what that look you're going for is, if you're gonna brush it out and have kind of like a big look, um, you won't get that with alpaca. And depending on how curly your mohair is, with shiny, slightly wavy, mohair you're not going to get that look either and you would need a curlier fibre to get that accomplished um but yeah so here's my little comparison video i hope that was somewhat interesting i don't know how i managed to make this so like boring in the end but, like mm -hmm. here are my views but here are my views <laughs>